Hello and welcome to this very first video in a brand new series uh, from Shed Talks called A Beginner's Guide to Colour Genetics in Budgerigars. And as the title says, uh, this series will be a uh, help beginners get an early understanding or first understanding of how the colour genetics works in budgerigars. And at the end of this series, uh, I hope that you will not only have an understanding, a firm understanding of how the, the genetics work, but also understand how you can make those predictions yourself uh, when you are looking at uh, pairing up your budgerigars so you can understand what uh, colours they might produce. Well, this series uh, supports a PDF guide that I have produced. Uh, if you want to download that PDF guide, then uh, go over to the Shed Talk uh, Facebook page um, and I will make sure that there is a link to the guide on there. It's free to download, doesn't cost anything. Um, and like I say, it does support this video guide. Um, if you're not a member of uh, the Shed Talk Facebook page, then uh, like I say, go across. There's a link going across the top of the screen at the moment. Um, if you click on that, uh, you should be able to go across and join the Shed Talk Facebook page. And while I'm on the subject, if you don't currently subscribe to Shed Talk, then uh, please do uh, subscribe now. And if you want early notifications of the rest of these videos or uh, any other future video that Shed Talk produces, then click on the bell. And of course, don't forget to hit the like button. So what can you expect from this uh, video guide and also the PDF guide? Well, when I first started looking at producing uh, guides to genetics and when I first started to try and understand genetics uh, myself, um, I looked at a number of uh, various publications and they really fell into two sorts of categories. The first one is, is this type, it's a fairly old book and um, produced by the Budrigar Society some time ago. Um, and what that one does is it just lists the various um, uh, breeding combinations and then what the expected outcomes is. So this one, and it's called um, Budrigar Matings and Colour Expectations. So really it's just um, a, a list of expected outcomes. So you need to do no uh, uh, calculations yourself, but you just need to find it. I, I mean, the obvious problem with this type of guide is as new um, uh, varieties come on, so there are new mutations and new varieties appear, this book then becomes out of date. Um, and also it then becomes quite cumbersome because the, the types of varieties that you can mix together become quite uh, uh, large and therefore you need to cover that in every other possible expect outcomes. So um, whilst they're a useful uh, tool, um, they don't actually, like I say, I think they are a bit restricted in terms of, uh, first of all, teaching you about genetics, but also then in terms of the general expected outcomes. So that's one type. The other type of um, book that I came across is this sort here, and we'll talk a bit about this um, in a second. So, um, and this is just a breeder's guide to genetics. And what this does is it, it, it gives you that introduction to um, what genetics are, um, how they work, some of the basic understandings of that, and then where it runs through some of the um, expectations in terms of um, how you can, can work work through those expectations. So, um, and indeed this type of book was the foundation of both my video guides and my own PDF guide. So while I'm on that subject, let's talk a bit about um, where most of the information in this video guide and indeed in my PDF guide has come from. So it's always good to know where any of the source material for any video guides or indeed any other guides has come from. Um, and in, in this case, most of this uh, guide comes from uh, three key sources. The first of those, and the oldest, is a, um, a book of, or a guide that was produced by Crew and Lamy way back in um, 1935, I believe, and that was called Genetics uh, for Budgerigars, or the Genetics of Budgerigars. Um, I managed to find a copy of this that was um, a PDF view version that was um, online. Um, I'm not sure. I've looked recently to see if you can still get it and can't find it anywhere. So um, it may be that it was it, since then it's been taken down. Um, but I did manage to get a copy, quite old, but most of the information in there, particularly around um, the way the genetics work, um, is still very relevant. The second one, and probably the main, or one of the main sources, 
um, is a book um, by Taylor and Warner, 1961, again fairly old, um, and that is Genetics for uh, Budgerigar Breeders. And finally, uh, the most recent one uh, is a book by uh, Dr. Terry Martin, produced in 2002, and that's called A Guide to Colour Mutations and Genetics in Parrots. So whilst it focuses on a wider genetics than uh, the Budgerigar, uh, the information in there is equally as relevant to uh, Budgerigars as it is to any of the other parrot species. So those are the main sources. So if you've been around um, budgerigars and um, uh, budgerigar breeders for a little while, I'm absolutely certain you would have come across uh, many of the terms that people use about um, genetics in budgerigars. Um, things like you know single and double factor, uh, recessive and uh, dominant. All these are in effect referring to um, something to do with the genetic makeup of a particular bird. And when you first start out, or, or even generally this can sound or seem quite confusing when people are using those terms um, and it may sound really really complicated but in actual fact um, it isn't the, the um, genetics in budgerigars just follows a number of simple rules and I will talk about those um, in a, those some of those rules in a later video or in the next video in particular um, so if you understand how those rules are that how those rules work then in most cases you can predict what the outcome will be of um, a pairing of any two particular birds. Um, and, it, and it will make pre um, predicting uh, the outcome much, much easier. It's really just about how birds pass on traits from the parents to the youngsters and you know we've been doing it so as you know human beings as societies we've been doing it for almost almost as long as you know prehistory uh, so when we first started to keep uh, livestock we tried to breed you know the best wool producing sheep or the best milk producing cows um, or the best beef producing cows uh, together in order to maximize the yield so like i say you know, study the study of genetics and working to uh, produce better and better quality is is as old as as human history. Of course, you know, if you're trying to produce an exhibition budgerigar, it's much more complicated because the uh, number of genes involved um, are quite complex, and in most cases, we don't understand what makes you know the, a long mask. Um, we don't know which genes produce it um, and so and, and it's undoubtedly more than one gene producing uh, that quality in the bird but in terms of colour it's much more simple because there are far fewer genes involved in the process and, and you know in most cases you, you know there's there is just a single gene producing a single variety so it does make life slightly easier when we're talking about uh, the colour genetics in budgerigars. So as with all these things we do need to understand some of the um, basic terms so I'll try and describe some of those now. The first of those of course is is the gene so you know uh, what do we understand about the gene? Well um, we each cell contains a complete set of genes for the for any animal and those so so we think about the cell as being the important Bit of this. Um, I've produced a very simple diagram here of um, a cell and we can think about the, the genes as being inside the centre bit of that. So the circular bit in this um, diagram is known as the nucleus and that's where most of the genes that we are considering um, will be contained. Um, so and the genes are, are held on chromosomes and if we look at again look at the picture the diagram we can think of those chromosomes as being the squiggly lines or the dots um, that you can see inside the nucleus now the the chromosome is often described as um, the the genes being like beads threaded onto a piece of cotton so if you imagine each of those chromosomes contains a number of beads or a number of genes with on a uh, on them and 
each of those genes has a place on that chromosome that doesn't change. So each of so if we have a look at this next diagram, where we're considering um, the a pair of chromosomes, um, then then you can think about those um, light and dark blue patches as being the various genes. Now, I said that a cell contains uh, a a complete set of genes. They, in most cells, almost all cells, those um, chromosomes will come in pairs. So there'll be two of each set of chromosomes. So I've moved away from the main shed over to my main computer and we've got a few slides now that we're going to run through. Um, so continuing to talk about um, genes and chromosomes. We've already said that there are um, or most cells contain two complete sets of chromosomes. So um, an abudgerigar um, contains something like uh, 24 individual chromosomes. So uh, for about 48 to in uh, total. Um, and we mentioned that the genes are contained on the chromosomes and we've seen this diagram here before or this picture here before with the uh, light blue and dark blue bands representing the various genes and where they sit on there on, on the chromosomes um, and the place where they sit um, we said is the um, uh, locus so each gene sits in the same place on the same chromosome so what happens then if a gene um, was to mutate so the we, first thing is is that this is not a new gene so it's not a new so if a gene that um, previously contained or made the body colour green mutates and now makes the body colour blue. Um, it's not a new gene, it's the same gene and it remains in the same place on the locus. So it means that uh, the what we will have is two different genes on each of the chromosomes, um, or sorry, we'll have the same gene on each of the chromosomes but one, will, one might be mutated and one might not. Uh, where a mutate, mutation occurs, this is known as an allelu. Um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. So the an allelu. Uh, so the so for ex, for example here, where we spoke about the um, a blue-bodied budgerigar, it would be the same gene or the same location, the same locus um, as a budgerigar with a blue. Uh, sorry, with a green uh, body, but the blue allelu would be just a different version of that same gene. I hope that's reasonably clear. So the blue allelu is just a different version of the same um, gene in a green-bodied budgerigar. So the allelu just means that um, there. It just means that there are two different versions of the same gene. Uh, within an individual um, bird or animal. Um, let's think about how that we said the genes are passed on. So we know that they're passed on from parents to to um, the youngsters. So and those the way they're passed on is through a special cell and I'm sure you're aware what that cell is going to be. So uh, the special cell that only contains uh, a single set of chromosomes rather than the pairs of chromosomes and those are the uh, sex cells so or they're referred to technically as the uh, gametes and that is the sperm in the cockbird and the egg in the hen and as I say those so that the sperm and the egg only contain one uh, set of chromosomes uh, each so they, and those that is random in effect so they're passed on at random uh, it, clearly it makes sense that they're only going to pass on one set of uh, chromosomes because otherwise if the egg contained both pairs of chromosomes then uh, when they merged there would be four chromosomes which which wouldn't work so so they pass on one each and when they merge uh, that they then contain, the new egg will contain a pair of chromosomes of each chromosome, one from the 
um, cockbird and one from the hen. So what are the implications of that if we have an LLU for a gene? Well that's what we're going to have a look at now. So let's have a quick look. So let's suppose in we've got what we said. So we've got a an, an LLU for a particular gene and in this case I've marked those genes uh, you can see them second dark blue bar at the top of um, each of the pairs of chromosomes and I've marked one with a, a small a and one with a, um, a large a, a capital A. Um, we'll talk a bit about um, how we uh, name particular um, LLU and particular genes in a future video but for now we'll just call this the A gene and we've got an LLU of the A gene which is um, the small a so um, it's not always marked that way but that's where we'll do it here. So from a point of view of this, the, the uh, wild type um, Alalu is the large A. So we said that the bird can only inherit one, or the chick will only inherit one uh, set of chromosomes. So in this case, it can either inherit, it can only inherit one of the chromosomes, so one of the alleles from each of the pairs. So thinking about that, um, the possible combinations of this pairing, so this cock with an allele that is a small a and a large a and the hen which reflects that, a large a and a, a, and a small a, the possible combinations of that then are it can inherit a small a from the cockbird, small a from the hen, small a from the cockbird, large a from the hen and so on until we can see all of the possible combinations of AA, small a, large a large a small a and two large a's. So final couple of terms then that we're going to cover in this video before we bring it to a close. So we can see that there are a, two different types of possible combinations from those two um, LLE. So the ones where they're the same, so an AA, large AA, um, large AA, small AA, small AA, AA and where they're different where we've got a large AA and a small AA and vice versa. Where they're, where they're the same we refer to the bird as being homozygous for that um, allelis. Uh, where they are different then we refer to them as heterozygous for that um, allelu. Sorry I think I pronounced them slightly differently there so the allelu where they're the same it's homozygous for that particular gene and where they're different they are heterozygous for that particular gene. Um, so and that will, is important in terms of how we will then make a prediction on a particular bird. But of course that is what we're going to talk about in the next video. video, uh, video. We'll move on to look at um, how we can then predict what that bird will look like in terms of its um, its colour. So in this case if this was the, for example, the, the blue colour of the bird, whether it would be blue or whether it would be green. But as I say, that is for the um, next video um, which will be, which um, we'll look at the tools we will use uh, in order to make those predictions. So that's it for this video. Um, you should have an understanding now of the, what the um, uh, uh, how the genes are controlled, uh, the, cr the chromosomes and the, uh, the cell and what we mean by the locus of the gene and what we mean in terms of homozygous and if a bird is homozygous or if a bird is heterozygous. So that's it. Thank you for watching the video. Once again if you did enjoy it then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.